everyone and welcome back to the Bocho's Brother channel. Today we're here to look at magic items and specifically a new book I just got out of Kirkland, Washington, that's near Seattle, the home and hearth of Dungeons and Dragons, The Vault of Magic by Kobold Press. They have their own game world uh, called Midgar, a campaign setting. I'm not too familiar with that setting. But I chose to get this book on the Kickstarter along with around 8,742 other backers. So without further ado, let's jump right in and see what is going on in the Vault of Magic. You've got a good little intro here. Here you see the game's guest designers. There you are. Many of these famous... YouTubers and big names in the industry who have worked on some of the magic items here. And you have a little introduction here by Deborah Wall, who was in True Blood, one of the cool characters in that series, and who now has many famous um, shows on YouTube. And here you see the 8,742 backers. Now they're are many things in here there's the armor and weapons section that you see here potions and scrolls there scrolls are kind of these are like one-time use kind of things you have a section on rings rods staves and wands you get wondrous items and these are items that could kind of level up through time and so on like the uh, kind of like those items of the weapons and armor of divergence and then you have the fabled magic items right there in the back all right so we start with the armors and weapons section and I will go to this first one here the armor of uh, Nigobu now this this piece was created by the YouTuber Nerd Arcus Ted, and it has specifically to do with the uh, world Midgard that Kobold Press created. So it's an item that comes from the Tome of Beasts. It's kind of this armor that's created from elephant hide and tusks, and it gives you advantages in finding elephant like creatures. Now, if you're not using the Midgard world like I am, you could always. You know, use it with something else, even with Minotaurs or Loxodon from the uh, Ravnica world, or even with War Elephants, things like that from King Arthur or Lord of the Rings, those giant War Elephants. But the way I would use this armor in my campaign is maybe on some NPCs, uh, the Umpani that I'm using. They're like a rhinoceros-like people from Wizardry, and I'm going to equip them with this armor which allows you to find other, um, either rhinoceros-like people or elephants, and it gives you a charging ability, and people will get knocked on their butt. Plus, it looks really cool. So that's our first item. We're not going to go over all the items. I'm just going to be sharing with you 10 items and the creators of those items. So the next one you find on page 42 here this one here you see that giant book this book is a shield it's called verses of vengeance and verses of vengeance is um it's used as a shield but it's kind of like if you ever played world of warcraft uh that judgment armor set for the paladin it's for paladins and clerics it can be used as a shield but it also has this kind of retribution uh, thing you can use the verse of vengeance and as a reaction when a creature hits you with a melee attack or when you hit a creature with the tome you can shout a verse of vengeance and the target takes 1d4 radiant damage uh, verses include surrender and no divine mercy or repent the hour of judgment is upon you or confess and be purged from the your unrighteousness so I think that's just an awesome 
kind of thing to give a paladin or a cleric. Uh, you saw it on the, the Drain Eye Paladin also in World of Warcraft. Kind of this big book. It also gives you a plus one AC bonus. So that's pretty cool. And that one was created by Professor Dungeon Master, who I watch pretty frequently. He's got good tips for D&D. And the next item here is this Whip of the Blue Whim. This one was brought to the table by Mike Shea, Sly For Flourish. He has a great YouTube channel with great tips for Dungeons and & Dragons. And this whip can either come in a plus one, a plus two, or a plus three. And it's a whip that was used by dragon slavers uh, to kind of whip um, their slaves and get them in line. I think it would work well, really well with the uh, Exandria world, where you had those two kinds of dragonborn, the, the dragon blood who were the slavers and the Ravenites who didn't have tails. And they could have been using this whip, which uh, it's a plus one, plus two, or plus three, plus it uh, can get this shocking electricity on it that does an extra 1d6 lightning damage each time it hits. So very cool to use with uh, any kind of dragon theme you might be using in your Dungeons & Dragons. And so the next one we go to is the page 54. And you see they, they, they got quite good artwork, you know, on the pages. Um, it's not my favorite artwork. Look at that phallic symbol there. I think uh, Scanlan would like that one. What is that? Liquid Shadow. So you're just getting an idea of the font here, the page layout. Um, but... We obviously can't go over every item because there are 950. So we're sticking just to those that are covered by the main people here in the book. So the next item are the Orbs of Obfuscation. Orbs of Obfuscation. These ones were brought to you by Luke Gygax, uh, the son of Gary Gygax, who was the original creator of Dungeons & Dragons way back in 1970. And his son got to add these to the book. They're kind of like hand grenades. You have one, uh, the uncommon one, that's kind of like a smoke grenade that allows you to throw it out and then escape from combat or, or create havoc. And then this other little more deadly one is kind of like mustard gas grenade, which would be causing some serious uh, acid damage for anyone who would stay in that yellowish cloud. So pretty nasty, pretty cool, Orbs of Obfuscation. And the next item we go to is now found in the Potions and Scrolls section. So that first section was Armor and Weapons, and now you have Potions and Scrolls. This one is called the Honeyed Half Heart. So not all magic items are combat oriented. I know we often think about, oh, how am I going to get maxed out with armor and weapons and spells and stuff that are going to cause havoc but there are some uh, items like this honeyed cake here that are used in non-combat situations this cake you kind of uh, have a piece you share it with your friend and then you're able to get this nice bonus plus two on charisma checks for a good long while as well as communicate with the person you shared that piece of cake with for a uh, for quite a while one hour so you can either communicate mentally or um, verbally but from a distance so great for non-combat scenarios at the castle at the inn negotiations things like that the honeyed half heart cake and that one was created by shauna germain of monty cook games um, they made the game uh, numenera or the cipher system as well as No Thank You Evil, which is a really good one for, for kids. So you got that kind of kind of silly stuff, and then you got the, the badassery as well. So we're jumping right ahead here to 120. And this one, this is another kind of fun item called the Butter of Disbelief. This one was created by Megan and Todd. Maybe you've seen Todd. He's kind of that bald guy with the uh, goatee. 
He does a lot of on D&D Beyond and kind of reports on the new books that are coming out by Wizards of the Coast. This butter is really cool. You could get it maybe at a lower level. And what it does is you slice off a piece of butter, throw it out on the ground, and it casts the grease spell until, well, until that butter's used up. But just a cool way to get kind of creative, funny, and create memorable moments. That's what magic items are all about. Creating some memorable moments in your campaign. And you see, this is in the Wondrous Items section now. We've gone from Armor and Weapons to Potions and Scrolls. Now we're in Wondrous Items. And our next item comes from Deborah Ann Wall, who I mentioned uh, earlier. Uh, she's the redhead from True Blood. And that's a great TV series if you haven't seen it. It's about vampires and werewolves. And as of late, she's been more into doing D Dungeons & Dragons live play. She has a new um, show coming out called The Children of Yarte, which I will link in the description below. So without further ado, let's see what uh, Deborah Ann Wall contributed to the book. Her contribution was the Matryoshka dolls, these ones here, which are really a lot of fun. Again, not really combat oriented. But you have these four dolls, and you can kind of place them out, maybe in the hag's hut or something. And you have the cutest doll, which would kind of distract uh, NPCs or, or evil characters and make them have a hard time seeing what you're doing. So good for infiltration. You have the growling doll, which can uh, snap onto the hand of somebody who picks it up and holds it. 2d4 piercing damage. And... Uh, the little larger doll is the Jolly Doll, which causes um, people to... It's kind of got this upside-down head, you see. And it causes the bad guys to get confused and swing in the air and maybe hit their friend or hit, hit somebody else. And then you have the Mischievous Doll, where if somebody's going around trying to gather up all these dolls, then they all jump back into the largest one. So this would actually be something Dungeon Masters could use against the players. And that's always a lot of fun too. Magic items aren't just for the players. DMs out there, be sure to give your bad guys and NPCs magic items as well. Because that just makes everything a lot more fun too. Alright, let's check out our next one. This one wasn't created by anyone in particular, but it kind of caught my eye because it's really cool. Well, there's a lot of items that are really cool that Kobold Press came up with on their own. But this one is called the Oni Mask. And I just thought that was really cool. You know, there was this Oni outfit in Overwatch, which looked really cool. So you could have kind of a ninja-like character or samurai-like character with the Oni Mask. And this mask gives you the ability to cast Charm Person, Invisibility, or Sleep. And it also allows you to change the size of your character from small, medium, or up to large. So just really cool for kind of a, that sort of theme. With uh, ninjas, spies, and so on. The Oni mask. So I had to include that one. And then we go on to... We are still in Wondrous Items... So let's go on to page Punch, page 182, the teapot of soothing. Again, not a lot of uh, slaying and killing. You can actually avoid combat like these kind of peaceful characters. I remember the Furbolgs in season two of Critical Role. You had Caduceus and Neela who were really into their tea and inviting to tea. So that would be a great character to give this Teapot of Soothing, which um, gives you temporary hit points, 2d6 temporary hit points, plus it will give you um, advantage on Charisma Persuasion checks. So trying to make, make friends, you bring out the Teapot. It's, it's like smoking the peace pipe here, the Teapot of Soothing. So I thought that was really cool. And that one was brought to us by... Um, Lauren Urban, who's kind of this online uh, live play player, 
who I think might be coming up in uh, a future series with uh, Deborah Ann Wall. All these people are kind of friends. And uh, she worked in collaboration with Adam Bradford, who will also be in the new Children of Earte um, live stream. And the piece that he came up with was this one, the time-worn timepiece here, which I think that's pretty cool. It, uh, it allows you to bring out this timepiece and readjust the initiative order, for example, or you could um, use it to um, give a re-roll, kind of rewind time and, and cause either the bad guys or the good guys to get to have a chance for a re-roll, and then they have to accept that new re-roll. And then as I'm talking, I hope you're able to see just some of the other wacky stuff you're getting in this book. Cool stuff, wacky stuff, silly stuff, deadly stuff. Look at that, the thunderous kazoo. What the heck? I'll include in the link below the, where you can get this book. It was a Kickstarter, but I think you can buy it directly from Kobold Press now. And then we will wrap it up with, um, on page 198, we are now into the fabled items, my friends. And this item was created by uh, Patrick Rothfuss, who's kind of that guy with the really big scraggly beard. You'll see him in live plays. He's a great player. And he came up with this magical item, this magical door that you could throw onto a wall or just about anywhere. You know, it even says you could put it up on a waterfall. And by going through this door, you will end up in any place you want to go. So it's a really powerful item, but it's got a lot of uh, little knickknacks and kinks so things can go awry things can go wrong and this magic item actually takes up one two three four five pages so you could have a whole adventure around just about any of these magic items you know the the adventure to get to the Fulton door or, or find out what's going on with the Fulton door so those are kind of the highlights of this book, Vault of Magic. Now, it's a book that you may have a hard time reading all the way through or memorizing all 950 of these magical items, which is understandable. I mean, I find it quite uh, enjoyable to just sit and read maybe before bed and, uh, you know, get your mind in a really fantastical place. However, they do provide you this section at the end, which I found really helpful. So let's say your characters uh, are successful. They beat a large location in the dungeon. Uh, you need to find a treasure chest. Here they have these tables that you can use to roll random on. And then you'll just get to find out which magic items are in the chest randomly here. And they've combined the magic items found in this book, the Vault of Magic, the 950 items, with those found in the Dungeon Master's Guide, kind of the original location for getting magic items. So, you know, the characters find stuff, and then you get to have a surprise of what they found. And it's really well laid out so that you don't accidentally give items that are too powerful to low-level low parties, or vice versa. You don't want to give kind of worthless items to higher tier play. So that's kind of how the book ends up. And so my conclusion, um, yeah, I, I love the book. I'd recommend it. I think it's around $40 plus shipping. And I'll include a link below. Um, Cobalt Press has their whole own campaign setting. I'm not too familiar with the rest of it but uh as far as books go this one is a good one to have in your collection and i guess that's it for today and i'll see you next time